I'm going to say a little about bottled water. Don't worry, I won't go off. This won't turn into a rant. A lot of people have spilled their guts on this subject, and it hasn't done any good. So it's not like I think that I'm going to accomplish anything here, make some significant headway. No. On the huge heap of protests over bottled water, all I'm doing is tossing in my two cents. What's wrong with bottled water? It's safe, clean, usually cool, certainly convenient. What's so bad about that? Well, it's the bottle and the water. I'm sure you've heard all the numbers. How we're suffocating nature with plastic, and the next great war will be fought over water. The bottle costs more to produce than what it contains. And then it's garbage. It never goes away. Fifty billion bottles every year. The water, despite what the beverage is called, some beautiful, pure, evocative name, and the picture on the bottle of an alpine stream, is most likely tap water. If you drank eight glasses of water every day, that's recommended, it would cost you 49 cents a year if you're drinking tap water. If you're buying it in bottles, it's $1,400 a year, a markup of 2,900%. That's crazy. And yet the market for bottled water is enormous and growing. People are willing, happy, eager to pay that extra fee. And that bottle of water is literally a symbol of our culture, especially for people living in regions where there is almost no water at all. It has to be shipped in by some relief agency. And often, when they ship it in, it's bottled water. Years ago, movie stars projected their sleek sophistication by smoking cigarettes. We all know how terribly sophisticated that turned out to be. Now movie stars and famous athletes carry bottles of water. Cool. It cannot be denied. There is a genius behind this. The Coke and Pepsi people were sitting around in a meeting thanking God for their product. In its many manifestations, diet, sugar-free, no caffeine, whatever, thanking God that they could make this sweet, fizzy, caramel-colored drink, pack it in a can, a colorful can, and sell it all around the world at a profit margin that would be unthinkable and unattainable for almost any other product in history, excepting, possibly, the Pet Rock. So understandably, all the people in that room were thanking God for such a wonderful product, all except one, the genius, or maybe a half-wit, or someone high on crack, who dared to dream of something better, something even more profitable, the kind of guy who said, what if we take the lead out of gasoline and then charge more for it, that kind of mind, and one day they summoned the courage to speak up. What if we could do better, they said. What if we could trim some of our expenses? What if we eliminate the sweetener? What if we eliminate the fizz? What if we eliminate the caramel color? What if we do away with the colorful can? What would we be left with? And while the people in that room, aghast, were pondering this babble, this heresy, the genius pulls out a prototype from his bag, a transparent plastic bottle filled with water sets it on the table. There it is. Says no more. It can't be done, an old-timer shouted, and others joined him. Murmurs filled that room, the people in it refusing to believe that anyone would pay good money for what? A plastic bottle of water? That's insane! But someone in that room saw something, and it was determined that they would go ahead, put together a test run, see what the market would do, so they came up with the beautiful, pure, evocative name and the picture of the Alpine stream, and lo and behold, you know the rest. And who, those who disparage this product, they're jealous that they didn't come up with it first. And so for the sake of the greatest profit margin ever known, except possibly the pet rock, and until someone figures out a way to get people to purchase containers of fresh air, and I'm sure they're working on that right now, till then, we have bottled water. Or, as I like to think of it, the very latest in the line of snake oil. 
Step right up. They do, they do. They can't get enough. As in the case of the books of the author James Patterson, the demand seems to exceed the supply, even though the supply is vast. Like I said, crazy.